Welcome to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, and thank you for being a part of our television ministry. Pulaski Heights is a place of warmth and love, with an outreach mission that extends far beyond our church walls. We have a long tradition of offering our hearts, stretching our minds, and extending Christ's hands to those in need. We are a congregation of hope and an open place of worship that seeks to share the good news beyond the conventional barriers of fellowship. Hi, I'm Brent Scarta, Senior Pastor at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. It is our desire that you will be inspired by today's message of hope for a diverse community in search of God's love. Please let us know you are worshiping with us. Fill this out. Put it in the offering plate. You'll also see many worship opportunities or ministry opportunities on the back of your bulletins. A couple of them I'd like to point out is next Sunday at noon is Membership Matters. For those who seek to know more about what it means to be part of this congregation, part of the United Methodist Church, please come at noon next Sunday. We provide lunch. We offer child care. We try to remove any obstacles that you may have to joining us. Also, today at noon is a church conference. We will meet over in Wesley Hall, and it is a vote on how we will proceed, how we will or whether we will complete the 12-year plan to make the additions that we have been talking about. So we invite all of you, if you are a confirmed member in this congregation, you have a vote, and you are invited to come and join us and participate in that church conference at noon in Wesley Hall. Also, if you've not yet filled out your your stewardship card, your commitment card, there are some in your pews. We're looking for 100% participation as we endeavor this week to plan out our budget for the year and how we will offer ministries in 2014. And so that information is very vital, so we invite you, if you have not yet filled one out, to please do so. Everything else, just please take time, read all of the, uh, all the announcements on your bulletin and uh, kind of see what opportunities may be speaking to you. I invite you to please pray with me. Gracious God, help us to slow down. Help us to be still. Help us to slow our minds and our hearts and experience you. Fill us with your spirit. Fill this place with your love that we may know you more fully through this worship, through your words. Help us to slow down in this weekend that is rush, rush, is Valentine's Day, spin, spin. Help us to slow down. Help us to center on what is most important, loving you and loving each other. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Therefore, God will hear our prayers for ourselves as the church. God never despises the prayers of the faithful. In loving kindness, God will heal our brokenness and make us into a true and everlasting community. Amen. In this community of love, let us share signs of Christ's peace with one another. Our Psalter for today is found on page 840 in your hymnal. You are invited to join in the responsive reading of Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8, with sung response 3. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep God's testimonies, who seek God with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in God's ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. may be seated. And now I invite the children to come for the lesson for young Christians as we sing together. all today and I, I need you to turn around and look at me a little bit because you know we've had football you know last time or one time before I brought a football do you remember that and we've had basketball but you know what's about to happen baseball 
baseball's coming, and did you know I can throw a 98-mile-per-hour fastball? Do you believe me? You do? <laughs> okay, well, if you didn't believe me, what might I have to do to prove to you I could do that? Throw it. Maybe the, mm -hmm, that's good, but who could tell if it went that fast? Could you tell? God might be able to tell. You're right. But what do we use? What, what's something they use? Do some of you big kids know? A radar gun? A radar gun. I'd have to throw this, and the radar gun would tell us how fast I could throw this ball. Well, that's probably what I'd have to do to prove it to you. You know, actions are more believable than words. So I brought this today. What is this? Can of food? Mm-hmm. I brought this because I really love hungry people in the community. Do you believe me? You believe me? You do. Okay. Well, you're very trust trusting. Well, I'm going to donate this can of food to the food pantry so it will help feed the hungry people in the community. Good. You did that yesterday. I'm so proud of you to show that I love the hungry people in our community. That's something you could do too, isn't it? In the Bible, it teaches us that it, these are the words, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and actions. Those are good words. It sort of means actions speak louder than words. So, I don't know, is there anybody here today that you love? Are your moms and dads sitting back there? Mm -hmm. And we love other people too, don't we? How are some ways we can show people that we love them instead of just telling them with our words? Can you think of something? We can give them a hug. Yes. Yes, we can tell them we love them. What about some other things? Let's see. Well, be nice to them. Our actions can be nice. We can be nice to them and we can share. Sharing is a good way to tell people that we love them. That's right. Okay, well, I really can't throw a 98 mile per hour fastball so I'm sorry but I really do love my needy neighbors and I'm going to donate this food to prove that just like you can do too by giving food and uh, sometimes you're offering in Sunday school it goes to help other people that's another way we can show that we love them Thank you so much for coming. Let's have a little prayer. Oh, holy God, we thank you for these children, and we ask you to show them your ways and all that they do. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Calm us, Lord. Calm us as you calm the storm. Still us, Lord. Keep us from harm. Let all the tumult within us cease. 
Enfold us, Lord, within your peace. This morning we pause to pray for those events that have hit our headlines from around the world and close to home. Torrential rain in Indonesia has affected the Pacific Gulf Stream, which has in turn affected the Gulf Stream over North America, causing drought in California. This in turn has disrupted the Atlantic Gulf Stream, so Ireland and the United Kingdom have been battered by hurricane-strength winds and the wettest winter in 250 years, resulting in flood. And the end is not in sight. You've given us charge to live in harmony with all your creation and with each other. Lord, teach us how to live this way. But first of all, teach us daily how to live in harmony with you. Hear our cry and teach us, O oh God. Lord, we pray for all working to ease the havoc and destruction caused by the weather. The ribbon of life binds us all together wherever we are in the world. And our actions have reactions, and our choices have consequences. Open our eyes to the life force breathed into us by you at creation so that we can live truly as members of one body. Hear our cry and teach us, God. We give thanks for the temporary ceasefire in Syria. We ask your forgiveness for the actions and inactions that have prevented bringing peace to this horrendous conflict. It brings to mind the horrors of Bosnia and the pattern that is being repeated in Syria, Israel, the West Bank, Afghanistan, Iraq, Mexico, Zimbabwe, Sudan, and so many other countries. Lord, have mercy and bring peace to your suffering people. We celebrate the good news and joy that is brought from the efforts of the athletes at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. We give thanks that in the middle of such human mess, there are flashes of inspiration and truly generous, open-hearted support of each other by athletes of competing nations. Lord, we praise you and give you thanks. As so many have celebrated or feel pressured to celebrate St. Valentine's Day, we remember those who produce flowers for us in developing countries, often in conditions which would not be allowed where we live. We pray for those for whom there is no one to make them feel special, or those who have lost that special someone. Lord, help us to share with each other, whether as a couple or as single people, the deep abiding love which only you can give us which even in the best human relationship is but a faint reflection of your love for each one of us. Closer to home, we remember those within our own faith community. Our Christian sympathy is extended to Eve Yancey and Martha Chisenhall and their families in the death of their father, Dennis Shackelford, to Dewey Glasscock, Calvin Glasscock, Carabeth Kelly, Susan Gamel and Paul Glasscock and their families in the death of their wife and mother, Betty Glasscock. To James Mace and family in the death of his mother, Harriet Mace. To the family and friends of Jane Johnson in her recent death. And to Mark Titus in the death of his stepfather, Reverend Steve Wiseman. Hospitalized recently, Bobby Joe Baker, Liza Clark, Bev Machen, Tommy Joe Price, Terry Sanders, Winston Faulkner, Eu Louise Bethea, Larry Griffiths, Lee Milburn, Brandy Rushton, Snooks Torrance, Joan Campbell, Casey Carter, Wayne Lindsay, Jean Parker, and Angela Sanders. Our congratulations to Becky Gordy and Nathan Pittman in their recent marriage. Connectionally, we pray for the United Methodist Church and our Bishop Gary Muller. We pray for our state officials and legislature. We pray for our national leaders and our President Barack Obama. And whether we agree or disagree with our policymakers and even our church, we ask for the gift of your presence to surround each of them and engulf them in all that they do and to feel your constant love. Bind us together in that love, O oh God. 
As the psalmist said, your constant love is better than life itself. And so I will praise you. I will give you thanks as long as I live. My soul will feast and be satisfied. All night long I think of you. I cling to you. And we do cling to you in this very moment. As we remember the words that Jesus taught his disciples to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. invited to stand for the reading of the scripture, which is Song of Songs 8, 6 through 7 in the Old Testament. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of this house, it would be utterly scorned. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, the love song. We've likely heard many love songs recently all over the radio. Maybe you dug out your favorite love songs to play your loved one here around Valentine's Day. Maybe it was Marvin Gaye or Stevie Wonder or John Legend or... Who knows where your love song that speaks to you. Maybe you're taken back to a moment when maybe in middle school and you would hand write a love song as a note and stick it in the locker of someone who you wanted to be your valentine. But as far back as we have recorded history, we have the love song. The expression from one person to another of how deep, overflowing, and passionate their love is for one another. Love songs are everywhere, all over the radios, on commercials. See, on commercials, they use them to push us to feel guilty and purchase something for someone we love very dearly. One of the things about I love about my cell phone is that you can program ringtones and even to specific people. So I can have a song for anybody that calls me that I like, but I can also have a very specific one for an individual. And so when my wife calls me, my cell phone rings with this song by, it's called Angel by Jack Johnson. It says, I've got an angel. She doesn't wear any wings. She wears a heart that can melt my own. She wears a smile that can make me want to sing. She gives me presence by her presence alone. She gives me everything I could wish for. She gives me kisses on the lips just for coming home. She can make angels. I've seen it with my own eyes. But you've got to be careful when you've got good love because the angels will just keep on multiplying. But you're so busy changing the world, just one smile would change all of mine. You see, love is in the air. Especially this week, love is forced into the air by every store and company and florist. But love is also in the air because I feel it when I have met, over the past two months, I've met with four different couples who are engaged and ready to get married and starting premarital counseling and to see the love in their eyes between each other as they 
look to plan their lives together, this step that love has moved them to take is truly beautiful. Even on Friday, Valentine's Day, I had the pleasure of doing a wedding. My first wedding on Valentine's Day, but it was truly beautiful. And as I engage in these premarital counseling sessions and performing weddings for others, it takes me back, oh, nine or ten years to my own time of engagement and pursuing a wedding and getting married. I remember the love song that we chose as our first dance. I don't think it's a common love song that people dance to after they get married. It wasn't At Last. It was actually Van Morrison's Crazy Love. Love is a little crazy. Van Morrison says, I can hear her heartbeat for a thousand miles. And the heavens open every time she smiles. And when I come to her, well, that's where I belong. Yet I'm running to her like a river's song. She gives me love, 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 crazy love. See, it goes better if I read it than I try to sing it. It would really get ugly. The love song is something that is over the top. It's overdone. It's exaggerated. It's excessive. We have other expressions of romantic love that are equally as over the top and excessive. Oh, for this special day, let me give you an entire box of chocolate. Let me give you two dozen roses expensive jewelry, or a car with a red bow on top. I hear people give those away. It's never happened to me. But there's an opportunity if you'd like. But the reason that the love song and the romantic gift are so over the top or excessive, exaggerated, well, it's because of the condition of the heart of the lover and how they feel about the loved. That's why since the beginning of recorded history, we have the love song. <clears throat> Let me read for you another love song that's a few thousand years older than the two I read earlier. You are beautiful, my darling. Beautiful beyond words. Your eyes are like doves. Behind your veil... <clears throat> your hair falls in waves like a flock of goats winding down the slopes of Gilead. It's very romantic stuff. Your teeth are as white as sheep, freshly shorn and recently washed. Your smile is flawless, each tooth matched with its twin. Your lips are like scarlet ribbon. Your mouth is inviting. Your cheeks are rosy like pomegranates behind your veil. You have captured my heart, my treasure, my bride. You hold it hostage with just one glance of your eyes. With a single jewel of your necklace, your love delights me, my treasure, my bride. Your love is better than wine, your perfume more fragrant than spices. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy as enduring as the grave. Love flashes like fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can rivers drown it. If a man tried to buy love, with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. This love song is found in the Bible. It's wedged right in the middle of your Bible between Ecclesiastes and Isaiah. It's the shortest book of the Bible. 117 verses. One thing special about this book is it's this particular book gives the majority of the voice to the woman unbridled, untampered, unbiased, free-speaking voice of the woman. 
But this song doesn't mention Jesus or God or the Messiah. It's called the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon, depending on your translation. But probably more accurately be called 50 Shades of King Solomon because it is incredibly hot and steamy. It's not PG rated in any sense. It has more in common with that romantic novel than it does with any other book in the Bible. Song of Songs reminds us that love is passionate, extravagant, crazy, powerful, it reminds us that love can drive us to do all kinds of things. Love is the most powerful force in the world. Floods can't quench it. Love is unrelenting. It's stronger than death. We believe that we will see our loved ones on the other side. 26 years ago, Jane and Henry Evans were newlyweds. They were just starting their new lives together. After being married about 14 years, they had a 14-year-old, sorry, they had a 13-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 8-year-old, and a 6-year-old. Henry was a CFO at a Silicon Valley corporation. He was about 40. Jane had made the decision to stay home and be a full-time mother to care for these kids. Henry would come home from his very structured and organized life in Silicon Valley and see a house with four kids in disarray. Toys everywhere, puzzle pieces and Legos that you step on and really hurts if you're not wearing shoes. Dirty plates in the sink. And he would say, well, honey, what have you been doing all day? Not the right words to come out of the mouth to your wife, the homemaker. But one day, Henry suffered a stroke in his brain stem. Their lives changed at that moment. Because of this stroke, Henry had what is called locked-in syndrome. His brain functioned perf perfectly. Everything in his mind was sharp as a tack but he lost all motor skills except for being able to blink one eye. Everything changed in that instance. Jane had made the choice to take care of Henry instead of putting him in a home. A huge sacrifice. Their lives were turned upside down. Jane is about 5'2". Henry is about 6'4". This was not easy. But she learned how to pick him up and set him down properly without injuring herself. It was not an easy task. Because Henry could only communicate by blinking one eye. These first years, these first days, these first months were so hard. But a breakthrough came with a plexiglass tablet that was mounted above his chair that had clusters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on, that he could look with his one eye and spell words through this clear glass tablet to Jane and communicate to her one letter at a time. And as time went on, she began to see where he was going with the word and finish the word faster, and their communication got better and better and life began to get healthy for them again. But since the tragedy on, they had always regained that ability to laugh and to have fun and to enjoy each other that made all the difference in the world. And after a few years of this plexiglass tablet of the alphabet, Henry started going to speech therapy again and trying to relearn how to use his mouth and how to say words again he thought he was making great progress and he on the way home in the van he tried to mouth to his wife i love you but he couldn't do it he didn't have enough control yet over his motor skills to mouth i love you and it made him so incredibly frustrated 
he furiously spelled out on the alphabet. He says, I can't even tell my own wife I love you. She said, you just did. Henry says, in the beginning, it was so hard. But in time, he has learned to count his blessings. He has family. He has a spouse. He has children and friends that love him dearly. He's also learned that it is so unhealthy to look back at what was. Henry describes Jane as the true hero in the story. Jane's friends are even envious of the relationship that she has with Henry. Her friends say, you two talk more than any other married couple we know because you have all of the time in the world together. Time is the one thing they do have. Before Henry's stroke, they didn't have time for each other. They didn't make time for each other. Henry was a workaholic. They came home, they lived in different worlds entirely. They never made time to talk. They never made time to share each other's concerns and frustrations. They resented each other before the accident. But now, now that Henry can't speak, they talk more than ever. Jane says she could not have done this for anyone else but her beloved. Love can drive us to do all kinds of things. Some the world may judge as foolish or crazy. But nothing is as powerful as love. It's the strongest force in the world. We're reminded that floods can't quench it, that it's stronger than death. Love is unrelenting. In this reading from Song of Songs, it tells us that love is sealed on our hearts. Love changes us internally. Whether it's the love for a spouse or a partner or for children or friends or family, love changes our innermost being. Love is also sealed on our arms. We wear love on our sleeve for the world to see. Love may be demonstrated by the ring on our finger or photos in our office or displays of affection with someone in public or any number of things as well. How we demonstrate love to others. But if all this book, The Song of Songs, is about is human love and relationships, well, why is it in the Bible at all? Well, I think perhaps that one of the reasons is that Human love is one of the only glimpses we have at divine love. As imperfect and flawed and crazy as human love is, it's the glimpse we have. We're reminded about love, especially this week, especially on Friday, on Valentine's Day, whether in your house love is celebrated and a wonderful time to express love or Valentine's Day is painful. Some have dubbed it Singles Awareness Day because of the painful reminder it offers for those who may not have that person. But through our expressions, our experiences of love, or through sappy love songs, we know that love is passionate, extravagant, sometimes judged by the world as foolish, but it's not about what they think. We know that nothing is as powerful as love. We need God's love sealed on our hearts, helping us to love God more. We need God's love sealed on our arms that the world can see it, that the world can experience it through our love of neighbor, through our love of each other. Because the seal is something through history that has shown ownership we have that seal on our hearts, we are reminded that we are God's beloved. It's one thing for us to love God. 
But when we begin to know that God loves us, believes in us, our lives are changed. Everything changes at that moment. Knowing that God believes in each of you individually, all of us corporately, our world begins to change. And we begin to be moved to participate in changing the world through this love. This love, 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 crazy love. Amen. be seated. As the ushers come forward, I would like to tell you that we are doing our yearly planning for ministry and we need your help. There are so many ministries at our church that allow us to worship God, to grow in our faith, and to serve others. Our stewardship is the way we show God our gratitude and our love. It's also how we show others that we love and care for them. 
So this morning, with your Connect card and your tithes and offerings, I hope you will put in your pledge card your um, Who We Are uh, commitment card in the baskets as they're passed. And now would you pray with me, please? Oh God, how fortunate we are to come into your presence in this majestic place of worship. Let us give generously that others might also have the security of a sacred place. How graced we are to be surrounded by people who live by the example of Christ. May our gifts this morning give others less fortunate, wise leaders, and simply the necessities of life, food, clothing, and shelter. How reassuring it is to have people in our lives to whom we can turn in times of trouble. This morning, let our gratitude overflow in our gifts that others might know the safety and acceptance of the love of God through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith from Romans as printed in your worship bulletin. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Once again, I would like to offer the invitation to anyone who seeks to know more and learn more about being a member here to join us next week on the 23rd at noon for Membership Matters. Let us sing the first verse of our hymn found on 590. For those of you who are worshiping us for the first time, you're invited to grab a token of our appreciation on your way out. If you have any questions, please see Reverend Clark. He is our staff host. You are all invited who wish to take communion. It's over in the chapel with Reverend Price. Thank you for joining us today at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. And I hope you enjoyed our worship service. May the peace, joy, and love of God be with you.